Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Tonight on News 22. An NMSU student gets her stolen instrument back. Shelby Cap gives us an inside look at a voice actor from one of last year's blockbusters. And we say goodbye to our graduating seniors. All that and more on News 22 Thursday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amanda Adame. And I'm Selena Madrid. Officials in Juarez say the huge recycling company fire is now 90% under control. The fire broke out yesterday morning. The thick black smoke could be seen for miles. Some reports say it went all the way to Alamogordo. Juarez asked the El Paso Fire Department for help, but while discussions took place, Juarez firefighters brought it under control. El Paso's hazardous materials team took air quality samples today and found no hazardous conditions. And Juarez isn't the only place in the region to see wind damage. We took this video earlier, earlier today of broken branches outside of Milton Hall on the NMSU campus. Strong winds have been blowing through the area as of late last night, and this is just some of the damage we've seen. The wind has been blowing so hard for the last couple days, and just last week even caused an 18-wheeler to fall off an overpass in El Paso. And gosh, this wind has been so dangerous. I hope it's coming down soon. Yeah, it looks like it's been calming down here in Las Cruces. Hopefully it continues to calm down. Selena, tell us more. Thanks, girls. And yes, it was pretty calm today. It is actually a really nice day today. Right now, we're going to take a look outside. Clear skies with a temperature at 73 degrees. Winds coming in at 9 miles per hour from the west. Humidity not too bad at 13 percent. Dew point at 19 degrees and our barometer at a steady 29.92 inches. Now we did reach a high today of 76 degrees, which is not very hot. We should usually be around 83 degrees. We woke up to an overnight low of 49 degrees and set record temperatures in 1996 at 87 degrees and in 1967 at 55. We still have not seen any rain. We're still in that drought, so we still set at 0.81 inches for the year. That's all I have right now. Now back to the desk for more news. In contrast to the school walkouts for stricter gun laws, today students walked out to support gun ownership. The walkout was organized by New Mexico student Will Riley. More than 200 of his classmates walked out with him. It was called Stand for the Second to raise awareness of Second Amendment rights. Walkouts were also reported in Iowa, Michigan, Montana, New York, and North Carolina. Riley was named an honorary sheriff's Riley was named an honorary sheriff's deputy last week by the Eddy County Sheriff's Office for organizing the walkout. And in other New Mexico news, a teen is accused of stealing a gun and taking it to school. The Deming Headlight newspaper says the 14-year-old boy was detained after students said the boy had a pistol in his backpack. Court records do not list an attorney for the boy who could comment on the allegations. And a New Mexico, New Mexico State University music student is ending the semester on a high note. But it didn't start out that way. Back in November, someone broke into the music building and stole two violins and a cello. But now, after some personal sleuthing, she's making music again. News 22's Andrea Vasquez reports. Kendra Kimbo Gutierrez is happy to have her old friend back. Her old friend is this cello. She bought it December 2016. It's upward of $8,000 and it's become part of her life. But for four months, the cello was missing. In November, someone broke the lock on Kendra's locker and stole it. I was really scared, honestly. Like, I, I, when I found out that it was open, I was kind of just like standing, you know, gasping. With the help of friends and family, Kendra put up flyers around Las Cruces and nearby cities. She also searched Craigslist, and that's where she found her cello for sale in Santa Fe. She contacted the NMSU police, and they called the Santa Fe police and recovered the instrument. I thought that it would be broken or, you know, the case would be missing, or the bows, or, you know, I, I, I didn't think I would get it back in a playable condition, but I always really, like, deep down, hoped that I would get it back. 
Police say the people who posted the cello on Craigslist did not steal it. They're still looking for the thieves, and Kendra is happy with the outcome. The best way I can describe it is kind of like going home, you know? Like you're on a vacation for a really long time, and you're sleeping in a different bed, and you're using somebody else's shower, you know, and you're not in your own car, and then you finally get home. When I got my instrument back, you know, playing it, I felt like I was home again, really. And she continues to search Craigslist in hopes she will find the other two stolen instruments. With News 22, I'm Andrea Vasquez. While Kendra plays her cello, other students here on campus are looking forward to graduation. And a few years ago, the Dean of Students started a new tradition for the seniors. It's called the Senior Walk. This afternoon at 4 o'clock, seniors gathered on the horseshoe to walk down the International Mall toward the Pan Am Center. It's a way to take advantage of the spring weather, celebrate graduation, and take a last look at the campus while still a student. I'm very excited to walk through campus one last time before graduation. Right now, it's just a bunch of emotions, you know, excitement, nervousness. Students not graduating are urged to line the route and cheer the seniors on. They'll take another walk a week from Saturday during commencement. And while seniors are walking into the future, lots of freshmen are working fast to finish the semester. But in addition to finals, tests, and projects, Andrea Vasquez tells us there's also the stress of moving out on time. Mariana De La Rosa is one of the many freshmen who was told it was mandatory to live on campus. Now, she needs to move out of Rhodes Garrett Hamill Hall okay, within two um, weeks. So this is my room. Um, it's a mess. Uh, well, I think packing is going to take some time away from my studying uh, because I could use, I could definitely use that time that I spend packing on my accounting final. During finals week, I have three exams and apparently we have to move out within 24 hours of our last final. If Mariana does not move out on time, she will be fined a hefty sum. I'm stressed. With a checklist in mind, students need to move out a certain time before the RA comes to check the room. All of the residence halls, which all, are all first year students, are almost at max capacity. Um, and so because of that, we have to be a little bit more um, strict in the way that we do things to make sure that everyone moves out in a timely manner. I've seen charges up to like $1,000, $1,300. So in order for students not to get fined, they need to clean their dorm rooms of all their belongings, reset their furniture to the original positions, dust, sweep, vacuum, and disinfect everything. Okay, what? <laughs> but with a little bit of luck, Mariana will be out of her room baggage free. With News 22, I'm Andrea Vasquez. Merchants in the village of Mesilla are trying to improve business. 19 of them have started a promotion called Experience Messia. Participating businesses have special discounts and deals every time you visit. It kicks off this weekend at the Cinco de Mayo Festival, May 5th and 6th. The star of this year's animated film of the year, Coco, visited the borderland this week. And News 22's Shelby Cap made the trip to Juarez to catch up with him. Luis Adel Jaramillo, who is the voice of Miguel in Disney's animated film Coco, came to Ciudad Juarez to perform and meet his fans. The movie Coco is based on the Mexican culture. It came during a time when tensions between the United States and Mexico are high, with talks of building a wall and stricter immigration. But Coco gave the world an inside look to the strong families, true values, and cultures of Mexico. No music. No music. But those tensions did not show in the box office. Coco was one of the most popular movies of the winter, and it won Animated Movie of the Year at this year's Oscars. Luis says how he feels now that the world is listening to his music. He says his music from Mexico brings Mexican tradition to many countries like Spain, America and Colombia, and to all the countries that like Mexican traditional music. He says this movie has inspired others to follow in the main character's footsteps.
stay tuned. Selena Quintana will be back with your national forecast. But first, Jackie Loera shows us a new class for every member of local family. More on that when News 22 continues. At a recent KRWG coffee visit, we talked with KRWG fans about why they value public media. The fact that you're here in T or C says a lot to me, that you're interested in our community. KRWG is my major source of information and entertainment. Please support public radio. Uh, if not for yourself, do it for me. Become a member online at krwg.org or call 1-888-922. 5794. Thank you. KRWG's next coffee visit is in Deming. Join us Thursday morning, May 17th from 9 to 11 at the Deming Visitor Center, 800 East Pine Street, to share your thoughts about public radio, television, and online programming in the region. That's Thursday morning, May 17th from 9 to 11 at the Deming Visitor Center. We'll see you there. Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Thursday, where news matters. Air pollution isn't just ugly, it is also killing you. A new report by the World Health Organization says fine particles in the air lead to early death in about 7 million people yearly. Researchers attribute many cases of lung cancer to air pollution exposure. Nine out of ten people are exposed to dangerous levels of it. But most of these deaths are occurring in low-income countries. The study notes Europe and the Americas are, used, are actually starting to see declines in pollution. That's because industries are getting better at reducing emissions. As air pollution is causing health problems across the globe, whooping cough is causing trouble here in New Mexico. The Department of Health reports several cases of whooping cough in McKinley County. They urge residents to get vaccinated. Whooping cough is a highly contagious respiratory illness that spreads by coughing and sneezing in close contact with others. There's a new baby in me class in Las Cruces and it's called Zumbini. It's for little kids and their moms, dads and grandparents. Jackie Loretta, take the look. Beating drums isn't the only thing these babies get to do. They dance, sing, and play different instruments. Zumbini isn't a music class, it's a class that teaches with music. It not only teaches kids how to keep the beat and rhythm of music, it makes them comfortable socializing. They're getting that socialization, um, not only with um, you know their families, but also with the other kids. Um, and because they have those other developed school skills, they're going to be um, ready for um, when they enter into regular school as well. Stephanie Sutter has been coming for five weeks now and says it helps her daughter a lot. Um, in the car when we, when she starts to get a little bit fussy around nap time and just kind of being done, turn the music on and she just relaxes or gets excited and, um, and it's a good distraction for her. Richard says she likes having mixed ages in the class because they learn from each other and the kids have nothing but fun. They get excited. One mom just told me yesterday that she pulled in the parking lot and her little two-year-old just started yelling, fun, 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 because she knew this was the place where she's going to have fun with her mom for an hour. We love it. Mackenzie always opens up and smiles and is laughing and giggling. Um, and coming here each week you see like something different. Taking these classes builds an emotional connection between moms and their babies. And Richard says that's important for a strong bond. Um, which is wonderful and needed for, you know, both the, the parent and the child. Zumbini will soon be available in preschools later this year. Jackie Loetta, News 22. Richard says you can also take demo classes to get a feel of what it's like. And the summer temperatures are getting up here. I wonder if the rest of the country is feeling it the way we are. They are. Selena, tell us more about what it's looking like nationally. Well, there's a lot of stuff to expect for the summer, but right now you can see that Seattle is at 73 degrees, San Francisco at 59, Los Angeles at 71, closer to home here in El Paso, or in El Paso at 79 degrees, Washington at a warm 92, and Tampa at 89. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at our next map, these are some thunderstorms that we're going to be seeing tonight into tomorrow. Now, this is going to be happening from Dallas all the way up into Chicago. 
Now these thunderstorms are going to stick around throughout the weekend, so you're definitely want, going to want to be careful. Now another thing that I want to talk about is Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, you can't see, it's not labeled on the map, but it's right over there. They're actually under a tornado watch. Now they're going to be under this tornado watch throughout the weekend, so if you plan on traveling this weekend to any of these places, you're going to want to be careful, check those flights, and pack an umbrella because you don't want to get caught up in that rain. Now, looking at our next map, this is what we're expecting for the summer, and I wanted to talk about this because we're not going to be here for the summer to tell you what the weather is going to be like. So if you're going to be traveling to the west coast, you're going to want to Check those temperatures because it's going to be very hot and very dry. They're in a drought and they expect to stay in that drought. Here in Las Cruces and in El Paso, they're actually under a fire threat and watch. It's going to be pretty windy this summer, so you are going to get those warnings to be careful when it comes to grilling out, especially because those fires can spread. And on the other side of the nation, it's going to be very humid. So if you plan on traveling to Florida or any uh, eastern parts of the nation, you are definitely going to want to take an umbrella because it's going to be humid and there's going to be rain. That's all I have right now for your national weather. I'll be back after the break to take a look at your New Mexico temperatures. It's a story of invention by reinvention. See how one man is changing the future of caregiving. Plus, fairy tales have to have a happy ending. See how an actress found hers by surviving and thriving. More hope, inspiration, and possibility on the next Growing Boulder. Next time on Antiques Roadshow. Our home got hit by a tornado and everything in that attic disappeared. You had rescued these cards about a month prior. Can you believe that happened? How well did these baseball cards survive? Find out more next time on Antiques Roadshow from Green Bay. Monday at 7 p.m. on KRWG-TV. When tyranny becomes law, then rebellion becomes necessity. Don't be afraid to shoot the FBI. Go home. Go home. Please go home. The land here needs to be returned to the people of this county. It almost demands blood sacrifice. No man's land. Monday at 9 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to take a look at temperatures around New Mexico. Right now, Farmington is at 59 degrees, Albuquerque at 65, Clovis at 70, down in Roswell at 77, here in Las Cruces at 73, and Deming at 72. Now tomorrow, the temperatures are going to be a bit, low, a bit lower than today. In some places, like Farmington at 69, Albuquerque 72, Clovis will be hitting a high of 73 degrees, Roswell at 79, here in Las Cruces at 82, so it's going to be a bit warmer tomorrow than it was today, Deming at 80. Now taking a look at cities closer to home, we have some clear skies in Alamogordo tonight into tomorrow with a low tonight of 46 degrees and a high tomorrow of 78. Truth or consequences, those clear skies are sticking around there as well tonight into tomorrow with a low of 49 degrees and a high of 79 degrees for tomorrow. Silver City has some cloudy skies tonight, but they should be gone by tomorrow. A low tonight of 41 degrees and high of 74 tomorrow. And in Las Cruces, we have some clear skies right now, no winds. They're looking pretty nice with a low tonight of 49 degrees and a high of 82 tomorrow. That's all I have for your weather. I'll be seeing you guys later at the desk. Now back to the desk for more news, actually. Thanks, Selena. Today is World Press Freedom Day. It was started in 2002 by the group Reporters Without Borders. The group looks at things like pluralism, media independence, media environment and self-censorship, legislative framework, transparency, and the quality of infrastructure that supports the production of news and information. Norway and other Scandinavian countries are first. The United States ranks 45th. The low ranking for the U.S. is attributed largely to the president's continuing attacks on journalism. Most of us have been bitten by a flea or mosquito, but that could be more dangerous than people may realize. So much so, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are warning the public. Here's Zach Covert with today's Health Minute. With the summer months quickly approaching and more people spending time outdoors, it's very important to be aware of insects. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are warning about diseases transmitted through ticks, fleas, and mosquito bites. 
According to new information, infections have tripled since 2004 and are spreading quickly in the U.S. Nine new germs have been discovered since 2004, the Zika virus being one, which is transmitted through infected mosquitoes. Make sure you and your family are protected. Wear long sleeve shirts and pants, especially when mowing the lawn or out hiking in the woods. The CDC suggests using an Environmental Protection Agency registered insect repellent to treat items such as boots, pants, socks, and tents. Protect those pets too by keeping them clear of ticks and fleas. And for one last time, I'm Zach Covert with today's Health Minute. And as the school year is coming to an end, New Mexico State Baseball is playing their last series this weekend. We wish them good luck, and Nolan Fox is here to tell us more with sports. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Selena. Yeah, the Aggies are playing at home to close out the season before they head out to Mesa for the WAC tournament. We'll be right back with News 22 Sports. The weapon that we will use is the cool one. The State Department sees jazz as the best way to intervene in the Cold War. We got off the plane, they had nine trumpets playing so beautiful. So I pulled mine out and played with them. Jazz is more than just music. It is profoundly political. Friday at 9 p.m. on KRWG-TV. I don't care, I don't care what people think of me. How do you create a guaranteed showstopper? Just invite Stephanie J. Block to the party. The celebrated actress charts her evolution in song. Stephanie J. Block in concert on Live from Lincoln Center. Friday at 8 p.m. on KRWG-TV. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back and hold on to your socks because I'm Nolan Fox with News 22 Sports. The New Mexico State baseball team is hosting their last series of the season. This weekend's series will be against Utah Valley. It will be the last series at Presley Askew Field for the seniors, Trey Stein, Mason Fishback, Marcus Still, Jonathan Grove, Matthew Perea, and Brett Worthen. It will also could be Kyle Bradish's last appearance at home for the Aggies as he has been scouted all season by major league teams and he is expected to get drafted come June. The New Mexico State tennis team has a few new recruits for next year. Today they signed Nicholas Buitrago and Martin Simicek out of Croatia. I'm sorry, Czech Republic. Britago is a junior from Colombia. He's transferring to NMSU from Middle Tennessee State. On the other hand, Simicek comes to Las Cruces all the way from the Czech Republic, as I mentioned earlier. The two recruits are replacing the seniors Christopher Goncalves and Sergio Espias. Well, that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action next year. And that's it for me tonight here at News 22. It's been a pleasure being your local sports reporter, and I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I can. Still ahead on News 22, we'll be back with a, a nice goodbye to our graduating seniors. More on that when News 22 returns. From amazing bronzes in Nigeria, to a master's vision in the Netherlands. Discover how art is transformed when cultures collide, cross-pollinate, and share ideas. Encounters on Civilizations. Tuesday at 7 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Aung San Suu Kyi was once seen as Myanmar's hope. Now she's accused of standing by as the army attacked the Rohingya minority. They are being massacred. She is walling herself off from reality. Frontline investigates Myanmar's killing fields. Tuesday at 9 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Welcome back and go ahead and take a look at what us seniors have done here at NMSU. To my freshman year. I got here in the fall of 2016. It's been about three and a half years now. News 22 is what made me want to come here to NMSU. When I started off, you know, just 
coming into the newsroom trying to get any experience I could. And I ended up liking the production side of stuff, so I applied and I was able to get the job. News 22 means a lot to me. It means like the world to my future career. I met my friends here, they became my family. I'm always excited to come into the newsroom because I never really know what we're gonna be doing that day. And the fact that I'm working with my best friends makes the job so much more fun. I feel so incredibly thankful to have this group of people. Um, we're a family here at News 22 and we help each other and we lean on each other. And everyone's awesome, everyone likes to have fun and has a good positive personality and is excited to learn. It's just pretty cool the support that you get from everybody. Nick and Ugo, let me tell you about them. They're really special and I know they're special to a lot of people here in the department. Nick has really helped me grow as a writer and a broadcaster in general. He definitely knows what he's talking about. He has so much experience. He was at Channel 9 in El Paso for 100 years. I'm going to miss everyone. I'm going to miss the people. I'm going to miss being on this set. The people, definitely. You know, I've made so many friends here. I have no regrets. This was one of the best experiences of my life. I love News 22 and everybody I met here. It's more than just, it's more than just school and it's more than just trying to get your career started. Everybody I met here became a family since I've been here. And these are the best people I've ever met in my whole life. And I love being here. I'm gonna miss, you know, working with a group of people that you have, that you're able to build such a connection with because you all start in the same place. I just love NMSU, I love this program. Everyone I've met touched my heart in a way I never thought people could. Allowing me to just kind of be myself and singing SpongeBob songs and stuff like that. And it's not only given me a family, but it's given me the experience that I need to be able to grow as a person. I'll definitely miss this place. It's just the little family that the journalism department has is pretty cool. It's a wonderful place and a wonderful environment, and I hope that News 22 continues to thrive. And I will never forget my time here or the journalism department, so thank you. Time and we're clear. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey here at News 22. It's really been a great experience. Now don't forget about the rest of the News 22 next semester. We won't forget about you guys. Good luck at everything you do. Thank you everybody for joining us. We learned so much. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Hola, bienvenidos a este breve informativo de Noticias 22. Los saluda Francisco Soto. Según informes de Rudy Giuliani, quien es el nuevo abogado del presidente, se espera que Corea del Norte libere a tres americanos que se encontraban encarcelados. Kim Dong Cho se encuentra bajo custodia de Corea del Norte tiempo antes de que el presidente Donald Trump fuera electo. Los otros dos americanos fueron detenidos meses después de que el presidente asumiera el cargo. Los tres hombres se encuentran detenidos bajo diferentes cargos, incluyendo actos hostiles y adquirir secretos militares. La secretaria de prensa de la Casa Blanca, Sarah Sanders, aún no ha confirmado la liberación de ninguno de los americanos. Un estudiante de NMSU está más alegre ya que encontró su cello después de haber sido robado en el edificio de música en noviembre. El cello fue uno de los tres instrumentos robados. La estudiante Kendra Kimball Gutiérrez buscó su cello por cuatro meses. Gutiérrez hizo volantes y los colocó alrededor de la ciudad y ciudades cercanas. Ella también buscó el cello en sitios de ventas por internet. Ella dice que encontró el cello en Craigslist de venta en Santa Fe. Ella se puso en contacto con la policía de NMSU, quien pidió asistencia del Departamento de Policía de Santa Fe para recuperar el cello. Las personas que publicaron el instrumento en Craigslist no son responsables del robo. Gracias por su atención. Para Noticias 22, Francisco Soto. Local support for a portion of today's programming is provided by Wells.